In this video, we're going to ask, what is temperature? Now, we all know what temperature is from everyday experience. We know that when you're lying on a tropical beach, there's lots of temperature, it's very hot, and sometimes it's not so hot. But what actually is this? Philosophers and scientists have debated this for over a thousand years. For a long time, they believed there was some sort of mysterious substance, which was called calorific or something like that. And when there was a lot of this invisible fluid in something, it was a hot something. And when lots of this invisible fluid had gone away, it was a cold something. But no one had ever seen this fluid. It seemed a bit strange. And in the end, when it was discovered that matter was made out of atoms, an easier explanation came to mind. Let us zoom in at the atoms, let's say, in the back of your hand. So in this computer graphic simulation, I've shown the atoms as blue spheres and the chemical bonds between them as orange springs. Now, chemical bonds are not, of course, orange springs, but they do actually behave a lot like springs. So this gives us a fair picture of what things look like on atomic scales. And what you can see is the atoms in the back of your hand or in your desk or in your computer monitor are not stationary. They are moving around at random. Some are moving up, some down, some forwards and some backwards. And this is what we now think temperature is. The faster the atoms are moving, the higher the temperature. So let's say we take your hand and we plunge it into liquid nitrogen. Don't try this at home. Then it will be much colder. The atoms will still be jiggling about, but as you can see in the simulation, they're jiggling about very slowly. You'd have trouble even noticing. If, on the other hand, we take your hand and put it into a boiling water, again, don't try this at home, the atoms will now be moving like crazy, jiggling all over the place, up, down, left, right, in and out. And that's what high temperature looks like. Now, that's in a solid where there are chemical bonds between everything. If we look at a gas, like the air that you're currently breathing, this is what it's doing. The air molecules are bouncing around, up, down, left, right, bouncing off each other all the time. In this particular simulation, we've put a small number of air molecules inside a box, and we've coloured one of them in yellow, and the yellow one is leaving a trail behind it. And this shows you the sort of path that the molecules are doing. They're bouncing around, constantly colliding with other things, changing their speed and direction. That would be hot gas. If it was very, very cold gas, it would look more like this. Very slow and very sedate. Now, this actually means that really there is no such thing as temperature and heat. Temperature and heat is just the words we use to describe the random motions of large numbers of atoms. We could dispense with them and just calculate the motion of every atom if we liked. We could take each atom and calculate all the forces acting on it and the accelerations as it moves around. And then if we had a really good supercomputer, we could do it for all the atoms. Then we'd have no need of the concept of temperature. Unfortunately, even the head of a pin has more than a billion billion atoms in it, which is well beyond the capacity of the world's fastest supercomputers to simulate. So in practice, calculate where every atom goes. People can do it if they're trying to study, for example, a molecular cluster or maybe even a very small protein, but for anything realistic, you can't do it. So how do you calculate situations when you just have so many atoms you can't follow them all one at a time? Well, if all the atoms are moving along at the same direction at the same speed, then that's just like throwing a ball, and you can calculate things using Newton's laws. If, on the other hand, they're all just moving totally at random, in that case, we treat it as heat, and we can do statistical things with all the random motions, as we'll see in a bit, which gives us a whole lot of ways to calculate things, also very useful. We could also combine them, so we could talk about a hot ball being thrown, and we'd combine this random motion with that and just add the two together. There is, however, a really irritating situation where you can't quite do that, which is something like this, where things are almost but not totally random. At first glimpse here, the particles are going all over the place, but if you look close, you'll see the ones on this side are moving down, and the ones on this side are moving up. And this is what we call turbulence. It's motion that's too small scale and chaotic to follow every little bit of the fluid, but it's also still much more ordered than just temperature motions. 
and it's a really difficult thing to calculate and it's a, currently a major research area. We won't talk about it further in this course.